Hey guys, it's been a while. <laughs> it's been uh, four months actually. Um, I had to take a step away from working on the truck. I had to take a step away from doing any kind of filming. Uh, my wife and I, we welcomed a new baby. So leading up to the baby, we had a lot of preparation we had to do. We redid our kitchen and we had to add another bedroom because this makes baby number five. So it's been uh, it's it's been a lot lately. So the truck had the truck had to get put on the back burner. So now the baby's been here for two weeks. Uh, he's pretty much settled in, and I've been able to now sneak away from the house from time to time and get a little bit of work done. So I'm going to show you what I've been up to. The the project didn't completely stall out. I did send some stuff off to get dealt with. Uh, stuff that was going to get done anyway. So I'm just going to do a walk around right now, show you what I've been doing, and we're going to put an intercooler system together today. So starting at the back, I started welding everything in solid. The tailgate, roll pan, the buckets, everything is going to be smoothed out. So I'm welding it all in. I'm about 90% there. Got a little bit more to do because uh, I want to get this thing painted before I do any kind of plumbing, any kind of wiring. So I'm trying to get any kind of welding fabrication work done now so that I can get this thing painted. I don't want to have to build the entire truck, all the plumbing, all that kind of stuff, and then take it all apart again to paint it. So I'm trying to be as efficient with my time as possible and if I can get all my holes drilled in my cab, get any kind of welding done that I know needs to get done, um, I'm gonna do that all now, paint it, and then as I do all my plumbing and electrical, I don't take anything apart again. So I'm hoping that'll speed things up, hopefully it doesn't bite me in the butt, but uh, that's what I'm gonna be doing. I finished welding the exhaust together on this side, so it's all done. I mounted an oil cooler up inside the grill. You can see it up there. Yeah. Hi. <laughs> I go to Jamie's house. No, you don't go to Jamie's house. Well, I got a ball. You're gonna go get the ball? Yeah. Oh, okay. She's going to Jamie's house to get the ball. So it's a 15 row oil cooler up in there. I was gonna mount it down near the bottom, but with if my measurements are correct, I've got five inches of ground clearance in the front here. If I happen to drive into a steep parking lot or something with this car, and I happen to bottom out the nose on this thing, well, oil cooler is gonna take the brunt of that, I think. So. I mean, if I whack the front end on something, hopefully I can still drive home with it being a little mangled. But if the oil cool is down there, probably not gonna drive anywhere. So I decided to put it up high in here. There, I got a light. There, you can see the cooler up in there. It's just a 15 row cooler. And uh, that should be enough for this motor. It's just to help out. I sent my hood off for uh, for blasting. Got it all cleaned up. Got some primer sealer on there. Now you can see the dents. Didn't actually know those dents were there before. No warpage though. I had a first step blasting in Ontario. Uh, Al, he's the one who took care of all this media blasting, and zero warpage. Can't say that for the door. I had somebody else do the door and it is warped bad. But this, even being a big flat surface like this, both of them, and he blasted both sides, no warpage. So very pleased with that. Now, for the aluminum part, I can't weld aluminum with this TIG welder. It's not an ACDC, 
can't weld aluminum. So the aluminum stuff I had to farm out. So I sent this stuff off to a buddy of mine, uh, Twisted Art and Fab, Brandon. He welded on my bungs for me for my oil return. I had purchased two of these ice water tanks and we welded them together. So now when you look inside, I just have one big tank. We've also got these guys. I got ends welded on the end of the turbos for this style clamp. It's supposed to be better than a V-band, so we will find out. So I got those welded on both sides, and uh, yeah, that should be fun. A lot more secure, apparently. Uh, then we got the intercooler. This is the beast that I've been waiting for for a while. So this intercooler, it's the Type 26 air to water intercooler. This is the same one that Kyle from Boosted Boys is running on his 1400 wheel horsepower MR2. This thing is serious. It is heavy. <laughs> it's thick. Like you can just tell looking at the side. Look at this is one thick plate that they bent. It's at least, I mean you can see inside there, it's at least 3 sixteenths of an inch. It might even be quarter inch. But like it It's thick. Like, look at the ports. Where do you screw your water into? Look how thick it is. Like, this thing's got some weight to it. So that is what we're gonna use. It's got a three and a half inch inlet and outlet. So we will have to reduce that down because I am reusing, not reusing, I have extra pipe left over for when I boosted the Le Mans. So we're gonna try and save a little bit of money by reusing this stuff. I need both two and a half inch that's gonna come out of here. We're gonna Y that in. I don't even know where my Y is right now. I'm gonna to to try and find that somewhere, somewhere buried in here. But we're gonna Y it together into a three inch, reduce it down, or actually reduce, I guess, make bigger. We're not reducing, expanding three and a half inch into this guy coming out. Then we reduce it back down to three inch to the intake where I have a three inch to four and a quarter uh, grower. We're gonna call it a grower. Gets bigger. Because this, see, 102 millimeter throttle body the outside is like four and a quarter inch. See, I need to buy one of those guys to fit it. And then we'll be finishing it off with a couple of blow off valves. These are just some cheap ones, but I've got cheap ones on the Le Mans and I haven't had any problems with those. So we're gonna be running two of those guys. This comes with everything you need. Here's your mounting flange. So, we got all the parts we need. We just gotta put it together. So as far as placement goes, this is kind of what I was thinking. Something like that. So I gotta figure out how I'm gonna mount this thing. So this is what I've come up with. Just made a couple tabs. These grooves, basically it's just going to cut the bottom of this support brace I already have on here. It doesn't give you much for mounting points on this. It only gives you the two blocks on each side. So, I mean, it would have been nice if they had three points or four points to mount to, but it only gives you two. So I don't know how much this thing's going to want to move, but 
with two mounting points, there's not a whole lot you can do. So I'm gonna try this and we'll see how it works. So this whole setup actually ended up being a lot more solid than I thought. Like those two mounting points, I don't really see it moving too much. <laughs> it's not moving at all. Uh, it's in there good. So it should be uh, should be just fine like that. So now these are three and a half inch to three inch nineties, and what I'm thinking of is. I've got this guy. I have two 180s and I think I can make this all work with that. Basically it's gonna wrap around like this. Now that's not lining up exactly right. It's gotta move over. So I've got about two inches I have to bring it over. So I am gonna slice this guy right down the middle and add a two inch piece in there. Because I cut the end off of this, it doesn't have this bead anymore. And you need to have a bead on the end of your tube wherever it goes into a silicone coupling or else the sucker's just gonna blow right off. So we bring her over to the table. All you need is a pair of crimpers like this. And this is actually one I tried uh, testing on years ago. And you can crimp a bead right into the end of it. So I'm gonna put a bead on this guy and then I'm gonna start hacking it all up. I'm gonna use some, uh, I don't have much green tape left, but I'm just gonna tape all my joints together that aren't gonna have a silicone coupling. And then I'm gonna take all my pieces over to my buddy's place who can weld all the aluminum together for me. Okay, it's been several hours and many cuts later, but I have it all mocked up. This is what she looks like. So down there, I've got the two and a half inch from each turbo fed into a Y that turns into a three inch. 
comes up into the intercooler, out the other side, and into the throttle body. Both blow-off valves on that side. The hood does clear them. I did lay the one half of the hood on, and I do have room. So those have to get welded in. Now, if you don't have a spot on your intake for your air intake temperature sensor, you will have to grab something like this. It's your sensor that comes with a bung. So you'll have to get the bung welded in, you know, somewhere before the uh, throttle body. But because this intake has, it has many ports, I'm gonna use this port right here so I don't have to weld a bung anywhere on the charge pipe. All right, I'm gonna get the stuff packed up. I gotta go and drop it off at my buddies to get welded. And then uh, all that piping's done. Just gotta get welded together. All right, it's been about a week. Got everything back on the truck. Got this all back from being welded together. And uh, everything turned out great. Both blow off valves are mounted. These are just cheap guys off eBay. Um, I mean, I've got the same ones on the Le Mans and I've had no issues with them. So I'm gonna run them on this thing as well. Now, if you're running an air to water intercooler setup like this and you plan on driving on the street, uh, basically, if you, don't, if you don't plan on putting ice in your, uh, in your tank regularly, this intake and the, the well the charge air coming in is going to heat up the water pretty quick so this intercooler is going to lose all efficiency and won't really do anything for you because the water that's in this tank is going to be pretty hot so i mean if i'm just driving on the street i'm not going to stop and keep putting ice in it so you have to run a cooler for the water. So down there, I've got a cooler mounted. Let's crawl underneath, I'll show you. So I've got it mounted back here. The in and out is gonna be on this side here. And I've got my pump mounted down here. I've mounted the pump below the tank so that, you know, from time to time I'll drain the tank or whatever, but this pump should have no problem priming or anything like that. If you mount it high, you might have an issue with it priming. So I've got it nice and low and, uh, you know, that's secure. This is secure. Everything's pretty solid back here. And I had some tabs welded onto the tank so I can mount the top of the tank to the frame. And then the bottom's mounted down there. It's kind of hard to see. But tanks mounted, the water cooler down there is mounted, pumps mounted. The intercooler and all the piping up front is mounted. So the only thing left to do now is to plumb it. And I mean, I have to wire the pump. So there's very little wiring to do, but uh, I'm not doing any of that until I've got the truck painted. But this, uh, this should all work out nicely. I'm very happy with the way it turned out. Everything's solid. This is a pretty badass intercooler for the money. Like these are only like 400 bucks. And uh, they've been proven to make a lot of horsepower, so. But yeah, we are definitely getting there, boys. We are getting some work done. And something cool just showed up. If you can read that, that's exciting. Been waiting for those to come in. But that'll do it for this video. And uh, I think we're gonna start tearing this thing apart pretty soon, getting in color. But uh, that's it for now, we'll see you later.